Hey, what's up everybody? It is Mr. Boylan. And in this video, we're gonna learn some dance moves. I call this one the solid. Do the liquid. Do, 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 do. Yes. Just kidding. In this video, we're gonna compare solids, liquids, and gases in terms of compressibility, structure, shape, and volume. So breaking it down as always, by the end of this video, you wanna be able to define compressibility structure, shape, and volume. Two, you wanna determine if something is a solid, liquid, or gas based on a picture of its particles. Three, determine if something is a solid, liquid, or gas based on how it behaves when placed in different containers. All right, now many of you are probably very familiar with some of the properties of solids, liquids, and gases. However, throughout this video, I want you to think about those different phases of matter at the particulate or molecular level which is really difficult to do because we can't see the individual molecules or atoms with the naked eye. But we can model the different phases of matter and throughout the presentation, you will see solid, liquid, and gas modeled at the top of your screen. And as we go throughout the year, I want you to think about the different phases of matter at the molecular level. Okay, so the first property, volume and shape. Solids will have definite volume and shape. Liquids will have a definite volume, but they take the shape of the part of the container that it occupies. And your gases, crazy, assume the shape and volume of its container. All right, this next property, kinetic energy, or energy of motion. Understand this property, you have to recognize that everything is in constant motion. Now you may not believe that. Move solid! So even though not every phase of matter is flying across the room, unless you chuck it, all phases of matter have some amount of kinetic energy. Solids will have relatively low kinetic energies, while your gases will be on the other end with relatively high kinetic energies, flying all over the place. Next, let's talk about order. And by order, we're talking about organization with everything in its place. Your solids, always in order straight and narrow, all the particles very well organized. Your liquids, sort of intermediate amount of order. There's a lot of flow in liquids, as well as in gases. They're gonna be the least ordered of all the phases of matter. Next property, diffusion. Solids, very low rates of diffusion. Liquids, intermediate, and again, your gases going crazy, really high rates of diffusion. Now, you probably already know what diffusion means, even if right now is the first time you're hearing the word diffusion. If you've ever put food coloring in water or mix some Kool-Aid together, you probably thought in your brain without realizing it, wow, those particles are diffusing relatively quickly in the liquid phase. Or if you've ever smelled a fart, you've probably said, wow, gases diffuse so fast. Okay, the next property to think about is density. We'll spend a lot of time with density in its own right. However, for this video, I want you to recognize that the formula for density is equal to mass over volume. And hopefully that's a concept you've heard from a previous class. Now, as you look at the screen, each of my samples have relatively the same volume or they occupy the same amount of space. So the value in my denominator is gonna be about the same. Now, generally with solids, the mass value is gonna be really large. There's gonna be a lot of stuff packed into that amount of space. Whereas with gases, there's relatively little mass packed in that same volume and liquids then a little intermediate. And so think of this now as a fraction. The denominator is staying the same. As our numerator decreases, our density will also decrease. Boom, density, states of matter. Next, we've got compressibility. Maybe a new vocabulary word for you. I like to think of it as the ability for something to be able to be squished down. Your solids are incompressible. Try to squish down a solid, it's gonna crack or shatter because there's nowhere for those particles to go. You can't compress them any closer. They're already stuck right next to one another. Think about your gases on the other hand. There's lots of space in between those gas particles and so we can squish them down and force them to get a little closer to one another. Think about those oxygen tanks or settling gas tanks if you do any welding. Next, we wanna talk about forces of attraction. In a solid, there's some really strong forces holding those particles together. Liquid not as strong, and gas, relatively weak forces of attraction. There's nothing really holding them in contact with one another. They just fly into one another and bounce off. Now, if it's Friday night and you're looking for some fun things to do, I have put a link 
to a simulation that allows you to explore some of the different states of matter for different atoms and molecules. And you can observe them in the solid, liquid, and gas phases, and the simulation will help you visualize what's going on with those particles in those different phases of matter. If you check out some of the tabs across the top, you can also mess with some of the phase changes. Think about heating things up, And in this simulation, you can also explore the different phases of matter that you can compress and which ones you can. All right, and that's it for this video. Check out the references beneath the video. Boom!